Welcome back to week seven and eight video for this week. I wanted to kind of start this video by saying I passed six, so I'm very happy. And it's the weekend now, we have nothing going on. So yeah, let's go through the past two weeks of sticks. So for week seven, we got there. Our transportation wasn't until 9 a.m. So we were just kind of chilling. We had breakfast from the DFAC and then we got to the bus and then they drove us to McBride's Bridge is where the sticks is going to be. And then after we got there, we kind of set up our patrol base and then you, we had lunch and we had some like briefings about sticks and what are their expectation and stuff like that um, while we're in the field. And then after that, we had cadre led lanes. So what that is, is that the cadre pretty much just kind of walk around with the lanes that you might be getting um, for your field time over there. So there's there are eight different lanes at sticks and they're all um cities in Arizona. So it's like Stafford, Flagstaff, Tucson, Phoenix, and stuff like that. And there's eight lanes that have different uh terrain. So you just kind of like go through that. Um so the cadre will kind of walk you with some of the lanes that they have over there. And then, you know, you can ask some questions. So they'll kind of like show you sometimes where they set up their ORP, um, whenever they do their leaders recon and stuff like that. Um, and then after the cadre led lanes, we just kind of went back to the patrol base, had some dinner. Um, so for the time that we were at Sticks, we had hot ace for every dinner. Um, I think almost every dinner, if not. Um, and then we just had MREs for breakfast and lunch, which wasn't bad, honestly, because you do have to be in the lanes for um, kind of the whole day if you are running the lanes. And then if you're not, you're just kind of doing some of the detail they have, like ammo detail, CP detail um, for like the gate guard and stuff like that. <laughs> All right. And then it's starting Tuesday morning. Okay, so Monday night is when they'll they gave the op board to the people that are um going the next day on Tuesday. So um Monday night after breakfast is when they give the op board and then the person that's going the next day, usually there's like five or six people, um, depending on how many cadre there is. So um the person that's going to get the upward, you know, have to convert that upward in their shell so that they can brief it the next day. And then it's going to be missing some stuff only because it depends on which lane you're going to get. So there's going to be a fraggle um, whenever you brief the, the upward in that specific lane. So after dinner, they get that, um, they write, they write it in the shell and then the next day, those six people for the whole squad will go on the lanes. And then before you go on the lanes, you'll have to like go, um, you know, determine your lanes. And then you, you're you going to get a fraggle from your cadre. They're going to read it to you. And then as soon as they hand it to you, they're going to start the timer. And then after they start the timer, it's up to you how you're going to manage your time. So you have 90 minutes from the moment they give you the fraggle until you clear the objective and you're ready for follow on missions. So um, that being said, they're going to uh, go ahead and read you the fraggle. You're going to brief your team leaders with what you want them to do. So usually alpha team leader will like do the terrain model kit and then Bravo team leader will set up security and then for us, we were granted like a 30 minute security from adjacent units. So what that is, is that you're just going to request it from your cadre to have like 30 minute security. That way everybody can like bring it in and listen to the upward brief. So after you get the security, you're going to brief your upward and, you know, you're going to start from situation, mission, execution, sustainment, and command and control. Um, and then 
you just kind of brief everything that's on there make sure you if they do give you a shell i definitely recommend filling out that shell because it's probably um connected to the rubric that they have for you so um you're going to brief that and then you're going to have like the frago um inserted in your upward as well um, and then after that, you're just going to have your team leaders set up their people to start moving. So the links aren't far at all. I think they're like maybe about 300, 400 meters at the most, probably. Um, and they're not that hard. You just kind of have to like trust your compass and to get you to the objective. And then if you're playing all four, um, which I'll explain like later, um, you you know like the off war usually makes sounds so that people can hear them and then they can find the objective um and then you're gonna go there and then about like 200 meters off um you're gonna set up your orp and then like the squad leader will take specific people to do the leaders recon and they do the leaders recon set up like support by fire and assaulting elements um where the location they want to be and then they'll go ahead and go back to the ORP and get the rest of the people and assault through the objective. So um, throughout all this, obviously, you have to like send up your report, um, like your salute report after you get back to the ORP. And then whenever you do the um, assault through the objective, you got to get like the lace report, sit trap and any nine line because you are going to get a casualty out there. So you just got to make sure you um, you know how to do the nine line. So usually they'll give you like a piece of paper, like uh, the nine line meta bag. So you don't really have to memorize that. But if you want to memorize it just to make it like smoother and easier, you can do that as well. Um, and then after that, that's kind of like when your lane ends is when you call on for like follow on missions. So you're just going to kind of like talk to your cadre like, hey, attack one one this is delta one one uh requesting for follow one operations and then the, they're going to tell you where to go for the next person so each lanes are kind of connected right so so if you start at like stafford you're going to like after you finish the objective they're going to tell you like a specific degree and meters to move and it's about like maybe 30 meters away from the objective to the next lane and that's when um, you guys are going to move and then you're going to set up the next people to do their outboard and their lanes. So I would say it starts at around, we form up at around 620. So we wake up around 5 a.m. and then we form up at 620 and then we get on the lanes by like 7, 8, um, depending on how many stuff is going on that morning. And then we go through the lanes and like I mentioned, we go through like five or six every day, uh, depending on how busy it is. And we probably end, I would say maybe like 16, 1700. And that's about the time like you go back, you return your ammo, and then um, you get ready for your dinner chow. So um, when you're doing your upward, I honestly think you should just you know, do everything. Like if you need a lot of information for your off word, just write it down if you think that you're gonna blank out. Um, because that may be like some of the reasons why some people kind of like that um maybe um like overwhelmed while they're doing the off word. So if you need to write a lot of things for your off word, I definitely doing I uh, recommend doing that. However, if you are doing your upward you shouldn't um do it for more than 45 minutes like 45 minutes should be like the maximum a good time i would say would be about 30 minutes 30 to 40, 35 minutes um that way you have enough time to go through your objective clear it all that stuff because you need at least one third or i would say I would recommend doing one third of your time for the whole 90 minutes to just be doing the upward and everything else should just be your ex execution. So that's the only thing I recommend with that. So a lot of things that, um, let me see one sec. 
Whenever you're doing your lanes, uh, just trust your team. Uh, so like I mentioned, you're going to be doing this with your squad from day one. So for me, I am, I'm first platoon, third squad, shout out. And I've kind of been in this, I've been in the squad since day one, right? So I know these people, um, very good people and very good team. So we just kind of like work together. Um, If you do... I need an SOP like before sticks we did rehearsals so for like our LDA because you're gonna see like creeks around there maybe some like minor roads or trails that you may have to cross so you might have to do like LDA crossing and then we did like reader leaders recon SOP um ORP um our pace plan for like ship and lift fire and our pace plan for communication so um, definitely recommend rehearsing with your team before going out to sticks so that we can before um, week seven starts, you know, everybody else were just kind of um, rehearsing in the field um, at OCS footprint, you'll see it here when you get here. And people were just kind of rehearsing in the field, just so whenever they get to sticks, it's easier and smoother um, just to cross those um stuff you know like across those ldas or do those leaders recon because you already know who you're taking in terms of your alpha team leader and bravo team leader you will not be able to choose your alpha team and bravo team leaders um so what happens with us at least i'm not sure about other companies but for us is that the night before after chow um they will choose the squad leaders and the team leaders that's going to be with that um, squad leaders. So you're not going to be able to choose your alpha team leader or bravo team leader. However, you get to choose the rest of the team to make your team, right? So for example, if you if you know that there is a, like a couple of people from your squad that are very good with line nav, you can make them the compass men right behind the alpha team leader. That way they can also... um know where to go and be like the compass person or whenever you're trying to find the objective so there's that and then rto um if you have enough people you'll probably have an rto rto will be helpful for doing like the salute report sit rep nightline medevac um and lace report so because they're always going to be right next to you and um in the midst of all this stuff happening they can just like take all the reports that are needed and just kind of like have you read them out loud so personally i was the rto for like a bunch of people in my team for probably like eight plus out of 13 um and you know like what i did for my team is that i kind of just like uh wrote down all the reports that um are needed whenever they're doing the reports however um you know you just gotta be like careful when you're doing that um because whenever i was the rto i oh i always got killed i was always a casualty because i was the lightest person and i was like the rto so i was like helping them out with like the reports and stuff like that um but towards the end you know like everyone else in my team like i mentioned they're very very good um i have like a bunch of um nco prior enlisted from my team as well so they're very good they were helpful for like the terrain model kit um all the rehearsals that we did and pretty much just making the execution very smooth so i you know trust your team like build relationship with your team and they're gonna help you out at sticks i promise um and then after that um that's pretty much like what happened um mostly at sticks now if you are like all for what all for is it stands for upper um opposition force i believe um what that is is that you're just going to be the acting enemy um for the people that are going through lanes so like i mentioned for us for example first platoon um they had first squad and second squad go on week seven until like wednesday or thursday um from like tuesday all, all the way to thursday so third squad and fourth squad we were just doing like the details and all four um you know like going onto the lanes becoming like the enemies that the objectives um that we're, we're gonna be at the objectives and then that the people are gonna like assault through pretty much so if you become an off four and you haven't gone, you may get like an idea of what the lane looks like, right? Because you're going to be there. You're going to be like collecting breaths after everybody finish. 
So if you if you'd like to like kind of sc uh, scout um the location or just kind of like see what it looks like, you can always volunteer to be an all four. That way you can kind of see what it looks like before you get on the lanes um whenever it's your turn. And yeah, that's that's pretty helpful, I think. And you know, once everybody goes through, honestly, like people are very helpful. Like they'll they'll tell you like tips and tricks and how to like get through the lanes, um, what you could do better. Like if they did something wrong, like they'll tell you like how you can do it better. Um, whenever it's your turn, so, um, you know, just kind of talk to people, get some advice and tips. Um, after they have gone, and they'll be more than happy to like let you know how it goes in their lane. Uh, week seven we just kind of like stayed there until from Monday all the way to Friday and then Friday morning we got trans back to the OCS footprint that way we can like kind of you know like wash your clothes freshen up take a shower um, and just kind of have that weekend for ourselves um, because for week eight is we're gonna go back to um the, the field so week seven monday to friday we were at the field saturday sunday we were back at the footprint so you know like we did all our stuff like some people watch movies they just you know did whatever especially if you if you get done from week seven um you pretty much don't have anything to do especially if you pass so uh you know people were just chilling they're they're glad the six is over and then after that Sunday, you just kind of repack your stuff. And then Monday morning, you're just going to go get trans to um, the field again. So from there, Monday is when we picked up. So like I mentioned, third squad and fourth squad went after the first two um, finished. So then week eight is kind of like our our turn to finish up all our people in our squad so if you have like 12 people in your squad you're gonna go 12 times right so you just like i mentioned you just have to like film a good uh you just have to build a good relationship with your team because if somebody fails you're gonna go again like it's not just that one person that's gonna go everybody's gonna go so you know they're your squad like help them out um and just you know, help each other finish this and just do it once for everybody. And then we finish, I would say around like Wednesday. And then Thursday is just kind of like the retesters. So if you, so for sticks, you get two tries, right? The first one is just uh, your first initial try. And then if you fail that one, you can go again. And for the second try, they're usually pretty lenient I would say and it's not going to be the same grader so if you have like um uh you know like a hard grader or whatever like a hard graded cadre you might get like somebody um chill like the second try <laughs> I'm not sure how to explain it but you know um they are trying to help you like the cadre are not here to like failure or anything like that they are like very very helpful so they're not out to get you, I swear. Like they're just here to kind of like grade you and stuff. So as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, like there's no reason for you to fail, honestly. And it's not much people that fail sticks for our company at least. And yeah, and then at the end of that, um, Friday morning is when we were leaving. So after like after breakfast or whatever we kind of jumped at the Yupatoy Creek um so there's like a little creek um over there and it's kind of tradition for OCS uh cadets or candidates to jump into the uh Yupatoy Creek after sticks is over because it's kind of like that big hurdle that you just gotta get through so we just kind of like formed up um left our weapons um by like the bleachers and then everybody just kind of like jumped into the Yupatoy Creek. Honestly, it was really fun. Um, <laughs> I jumped there as well with my friends. So, you know, like a bunch of people were just having fun. Honestly, it was like, it was very fun. Um, and then, but if you don't want to go, don't go. You don't have to. Um, there's like some people that stayed back, but if you are like the type of person that just like want to have fun or whatever, um, just jump there and because it's tradition anyways 
And then after that, we just kind of went back and then packed our stuff. Emma got picked up. And then we pretty much got back on Thursday. No, we actually, we got back on Thursday. Sorry. Uh, we did get back on Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is we have a four day this weekend because um, it's Labor Day weekend. So it was very nice to get back earlier um and finish everybody and then just come back here and have a four-day weekend Wait. that's pretty much what happened for the last two weeks i'm very excited um because today is the 31st and tomorrow is gonna be the start of september and we only have um like three more weeks or no like three and a half more weeks to finish and next week is we're going to learn uh, or we're going to find out what branches we are. So wish me luck. I hope I get what I want. I'll let you guys know um, what happens there. And then I'll kind of explain, I guess, how um, branching works next week. That way you guys can like find out if people got their branches. I know there's like some TBB a preference or whatever i'll talk more about it later i have to like research more about it and talk to more people about it um but once i get my branch i'll let you guys know i'm very excited but also kind of nervous so hopefully next week i'll come back here um and i'm happy like this week because last week i was very um i was nervous about sticks because of like the execution, because if you do commit fratricide, um, you will get recycled. So, you know, like I was, I was very nervous about that. Like the off port, the off port, I wasn't nervous about it. Actually, when I was going through it, the battalion commander literally got there and he was just like walking around trying to see like what's going on. And I <laughs> I had to brief it in front of my team, the cadre and the battalion commander, but Thankfully, like it went well. Um, and then I actually got a coin. Wait, I'll show you. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, <laughs> so I got this from the commander because um my cadre for our lanes, um, he was like, he was like, oh, you know, like I have um Robles here and she was a good team leader so you know like I got this one from the field so I'm very happy yes <laughs> that sorry guys I'm just happy this weekend um so yeah that's pretty much everything for week seven and eight um I'll let you guys know how it, um how what's gonna happen next week but other than that, if you have any questions or whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.